watching the Apostle of God today. I am super excited to come into your world once again with the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart that your life will never be the same again. Whenever God wants to take you from one level to another level, God sends a man. And I believe that God has sent me here today to come and speak to you, to come and talk to you, so that you can go to the level that God wants you to operate in. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to take too much time. I see a lot of people on Zoom are excited to be here. I'm not going to take too much time, but I want us to go deeper today. It's not going to be long, but I want us to be deep. Amen. Hallelujah. What are we talking about today? Today we are talking about prayer. And of course, the message of today, the, 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 the sermon of today has been titled or rather coined, This is Why You Should Pray. Amen. And of course, if you have watched a teaching that I I did, I think, a few months ago in the headquarters of New Life Global Church called The Wens of Prayer. I said I was going to come back and teach about why or on why one should pray. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hence today, the message is this is why you should pray. Because sometimes people don't pray because they don't know the why. Hallelujah. The Lord. Last time we said, once you know the when of prayer, it's easier for you to generate power. But today we're going to go deeper anyway. Get your Bible, get your notepad, get your notebook, and please pay attention today. Get your Bible, lift up that power up high. If you don't have your Bible and it's on Wednesday, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because you all know that every Wednesday we are meeting for a meeting, for a fellowship, for a service, and every Sunday. And you have to, you must, you ought to have your Bible. Lift it up high and say, this is my Bible. I believe. I believe it contains the word of God. It contains the word of God. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I will do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My, mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. And my life shall never, ever be the same again. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Are you excited, brothers and sisters? Are you excited, brothers and sisters? If you are excited, give Jesus a hand of praise and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Let me start by saying the world is too evil for you to use your intellect or your personal strength. When Paul started talking in the book of Ephesians 6, and you read from verses 10, when he said, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. He then gets to a point where he says, he talks about the armor, he then says in verse 12, 
put on, in verse 11, he speaks about the armor, put on the whole armor. Then in verse 12, he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He knows we are in the flesh, but he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He then begins to name these entities that we are up against. He then goes down and he says, the days are evil. He then comes back in verses 14 and then he talks about the whole armor. And then he begins to describe the armor. But when he gets to verse 17 now, going to 18, he says, praying with all kinds of prayer. Hallelujah. The world is too evil for you to use logic, for you to use intellect, for you to use your personal strength. Many destinies have been flushed down the drain because one wanted to combat a spiritual matter using their physical strength. I'll give an example and then we read the scripture of the day. When the disciples of Jesus were faced with an angry storm, remember Jesus said, let us cross to the other side because there was a man from the land of the Gadarians that Jesus was supposed to deliver. The man who was demon-possessed. We know the story. The Bible says, in the middle, there arose an angry storm, troubled their boat. And Jesus, being Jesus, he was sleeping. And the disciples were trying their best to take out the water. They were trying to take out the water. I believe they were using buckets. They were using what they had. But what they did not understand was, though what they are dealing with looks physical, it has crossed the line of the natural. It was now supernatural. And how do I know that? Because when they woke Jesus up, they said, Master, but don't you really, don't you really care? Don't you care? We are dying here. And Jesus stood up. And according to my Bible, he said three words. Peace be still. And after peace be still, then the Bible says, and he rebuked the wind and he spoke to the sea. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, there are certain things that when you look at them, you might think because they are non living, they are natural. Things like a wind. Things like the sea. But I want you to understand that whether living or non-living, everything has an ear. And as a believer, it is never your duty to locate the ear in order to speak to that thing. You don't have to locate the ear to speak. Once you sense in your spirit that it is no longer natural, speak. Rebuke. And the Bible says, and Jesus rebuked the wind and he spoke to the sea. Are you hearing me? Yes, Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes, he didn't join the disciples in trying to remove the water from the boat because he understood that this storm was no longer natural. And that is because where they were going, Jesus was going to deliver a man who was going to fulfill prophecy. So it looked as if it was a normal storm. But the storm was meant to stop Jesus from getting to the other side. How do I know that? Remember when Jacob, Israel, blessed his sons? He spoke about God, that a troop shall overcome him. And if you study throughout the scriptures, you realize that the man who was demon-possessed, the one who said, my name is Legion, he was from the land of the Gadarians. And these are people who came from God. Are you hearing me? I don't want to talk about that because I don't want to, you know, uh, lose you somewhere there. But uh, I want you to understand that this was beyond natural. And some of you, that's what you're doing in your finances, in your marriage, in your relationship, in your workplace, in your career, in your business, even in your walk with God. You're using logic to solve spiritual matters. Brothers and sisters, there is a reason why after God gave us a mind, he gave us the Holy Spirit. 
There is a reason why Paul said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Because carnality goes back to how we process things. The book of Luke. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. I see a lot of people are connected already on YouTube. Uh, we have people as well connected on Zoom. I see Paul King. I see Minister Armstrong. I see Chris Uwakbo. I see Evangelist Gift. Uh, I see Rotondra there. I see Talisha. I see Moses Nyati. I see Augustine. I see Mudiwa saying, we are here. I see Timothy Peters. Kanye Sila is also here. Busiso Innocent is also here. Well, let's flow. Let's flow. The book of Luke chapter 9, and we read verses uh, 28. Uh, yeah, 28 will do. 28 will do. 28 will do. Now, my Bible reads, and I'm reading from King James. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings. He took Peter and John and James. We know who these are. And went up into a mountain to pray. What was the reason? For Jesus to take the disciples to the mountain. Thank you. I'll ask again. Why did he take this tree? Was so that he could? Did the Bible say so that he could prophesy to them? But into the mountain too? Pray. Somebody say pray. pray. Verse 29. Which is our main verse. But for the sake of context. I had to start from verse 28. 29 says. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glittering. Now, if I was to read that in another vision, NIV, as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. And his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Well, the same story that we just read right now, you can also find the same story in the book of Matthew chapter 17. And of course, the writer there says he took his disciples to the mountain of transfiguration. Hallelujah. Kala uh, You see, I, I love it because the Bible in verse 28, brothers and sisters, please pay attention. Pay attention. I pray you pay attention. And this is why you should pray. In verse 28, he took his disciples to pray. Now, I'm troubled as a student of the scripture by verse 29. And why am I troubled? I'm troubled because in verse 28, he took his core, his inner cycle. We know Peter, John, James, was the, were the, they were the core disciples of Jesus. We call them the inner cycle of Jesus, these three. He took them to the mountain to pray. But verse 29 troubles me because it says, and as he prayed, Wait a minute. Why is the Bible saying as he prayed, not as they prayed? Yes, oh, my goodness. Come on, somebody, pay attention now. Why is the Bible saying as he prayed, not as they prayed? He took them to the mountain to pray. But when they got there, they were occupied. 
I don't know what occupied them. But the master of creation was praying. And the Bible then tells us that as he was praying, he was transfigured. <laughs> Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. The Bible says, and he was transfigured. Now we know why only Jesus was transfigured. Because the Bible says, as he, meaning if they prayed with him, they will have experienced transformation just as our Lord and Savior Jesus experienced it. Meaning today you and I will be reading the same book, the same verse, and the verse will be saying, and they were transfigured. But the reason why the Bible does not say they were, but he was, because the Bible says he was praying. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you see, once you realize by revelation and once you realize by understanding that prayer is personal, you will never take prayer for granted. There are things that the prayers of your father can do. But there are things that only your prayers can do. Uh, let me say that again. Let me say that again. There are things that the prayers of your wife can do. But there are certain things that the prayers of your wife cannot do. Maybe let's break down the word transfigured. So you guys, you will understand where Apostle is taking you. The devil is a liar. The Bible says, and he was transfigured. Hallelujah. The word transfigured is a Greek word, metamorphoso. Are you hearing me? From an English word, metamorphosis. But metamorphoso means, pay attention now, pay attention now. To make the inside, if you're writing, you better write this down. And outside align. Let me say that again. Metamorphosal is to make the inside and the outside align. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Meaning, as you are listening to the apostle, there is something on the inside of you. There is something that God has deposited inside of you. There is something that is only attached to your spirit. And the only way it can come out, it is by prayer and through prayer. Let me break it down so you guys understand. Hence, an attack, right? In your prayer life, it is an attack on what is on the inside of you. And what is on the inside of you is what defines your destiny. So an attack on your prayer life, it is an attack on your destiny. Ah, yeah. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Maybe, maybe if I can go deeper here, some people will understand. Brothers and sisters... Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 tells us, right? Verse 26 says, let us create man. Verse 27, and God created man, right? In his own image, after his own likeness. So for us to understand men in Genesis 1 27, we need to understand who God is. John 4 says God is a spirit. Meaning Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, man is a spirit. But guess what? In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, God formed men out of the dust of the ground. Mm -hmm. But to the Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 men, Pastor Brian, yes, God never attached anything to that man. Yes, In Genesis chapter 1 verses 26, he says, let us create men. And then he begins to explain why. So that they or he may have dominion. Yes, so we see dominion. We see power. We see authority. In the book of Genesis chapter 26. So that's the Genesis chapter what? One man who has been created with something 
attached to his spirit. Are you hearing me? But the Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, man, God says nothing. He just forms him out of the dust. Meaning if I was to walk in dominion, I will need to tap in Genesis chapter 1, man. But I want you to understand that you don't tap in by the reason of thinking. You tap in by the reason of prayer. And some of you, you need to understand that there are prophecies on the inside of you. There is a future on the inside of you. Are you hearing me? There are seasons that will give blueprints to your generation after you. That was too deep, you Are you hearing me? But the only way that those things and that will come out, it is by prayer. The Bible says, and he was transfigured. Hallelujah. So the outside began to align with the inside. And he was a different man. And once that took place, then the Bible then says, ah, yeah. and behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. Are you hearing me? Who appeared in glory and spake of his disease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Are you hearing me? Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. But I want you to understand that as you continue to read, then the Bible says, and God spoke. Not only did Jesus speak to Elijah and Moses, God came down and began to speak. And the Bible says, and they heard him. And the disciples heard him. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Are you hearing me? What is prayer? I've already taught on prayer. Please, if you have not watched uh, a teaching by Apostle Miss called Prayer That God Cannot Ignore, please watch it. Because that's where I'm talking about what prayer is. And also there is a teaching where, uh, that Apostle did that says, um, what happens when you don't pray? So watch those two uh, sermons. Very powerful. They'll bless you in a mighty way. So I'm not going to go deep today into what prayer is because we've already, we have already taught and talked about that. What is prayer? For a baby in the Lord, prayer is a Greek word prosuke. Prosuke means two-way communication. Meaning prayer is a dialogue, not an analog. When you are in prayer, you are not in prayer to talk to yourself. Once you treat prayer as if prayer is for information, you will lose the power of prayer. We don't inform God when we pray. But rather prayer is for our formation. Because God already knows. Hence, Isaiah declares, before you call, before you pray, I shall answer you. He already knows. So prayer is not me informing God, but prayer is for my formation. I am formed when I pray. Are you hearing me? The moment I pray, I am formed. And we see here that Jesus was transfigured. He was transformed into another man, into another being, so to say. That's why I always tell believers, run away from a church, from a, an assembly of people who claim to love God, but can't talk to God in prayer. I'd rather find myself in a church where people pray and teach the word. Rather than to find myself in a church where I don't see prayer, but I see miracles. I'm not saying all miracles are fake. God cannot be in a place and you don't see his manifestations. But not every time when one sees manifestations is an indication that God is in a place. 
God cannot be in a place and you don't see his power. But not everywhere you see power, it means God is there. There are certain things that as a believer, you should look for before you say, yes, I'm committing here. And one of the things is prayer. And I will tell you why. Jesus said, my house shall be called house of prayer. So you know is his house when there is prayer. And that is because prayer is prosuke. Prosuke is communication. Two-way communication. Are you hearing me, somebody? And Jesus gave a parable. And after that in Luke 18, and we read uh, verses 1 going down, it says, and men ought to pray always and faint not. Haya. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that it was the power of prayer that made Jesus the model we now celebrate. It was prayer that caused Jesus to fulfill destiny. That even at the end of it, where he knew that prayer cannot save him, he still prayed. But what was he praying for? Because already he knew he was going to the cross. He was praying for his formation. Ah, yeah. ah this is too deep. Ah, this is too deep. I said, this is too deep. Are you hearing me? He was praying for his formation. Even though he was the son of God. I want you to know from today that without prayer, Jesus will not have conquered. 100% man, 100% God. So much of a man for you to believe he was a God. And so much of a God for you to believe he was a man. But without prayer, Jesus will not have fulfilled destiny. And what makes you think today as a follower of Jesus Christ, you are going to fulfill destiny without prayer. I hear the Lord telling me to tell you, this is not just a season of prayer, but this is a dispensation of prayer. Because the days are dark. The days are evil. And if you have not been praying, you have been playing. If you have not been praying, I want you to hear me now. It is time for you to clear ashes on your altar. Leviticus 6.13, the Bible declares that the fire must continue to burn on the altar. And the fire must never go out. Am I talking to somebody here today? Am I talking to somebody here? Are you here? When a man knows what he carries or what is on the inside of him, he carries a prayer altar with him. Never forget that. Write that down. When you know what is inside of you, what you know, once you know what God has put in you, you pray, you carry a prayer altar with you. Because you understand by revelation that there are altars that will not let you succeed. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I say succeed, I'm not talking about just you succeeding physically. But I'm talking about even in your walk with God. Because what the enemy is really after is you walking in the perfect will of God. We know the will of God concerning his children because the Bible tells us his will. You see, in the world that we are in, everybody has an opinion. As to how God wants you to live your life. But I want you one time to just take time and step out of that box. And begin to read for yourself what God expects of you. You will see that when it comes to God, your life is supposed to be upwards and forward only. You are supposed to be a winner 360. Oh my goodness. I wish I could talk to somebody. Why you should pray. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Apostle. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Apostle. 
prayer is so powerful that not only can it transform you, because we see Jesus here, he was transfigured, but all of a sudden, he's having access to something that we have never seen him have access to. He speaks to Moses. He speaks to Elijah. Yes, One would think, but well is Jesus. No, when he was on earth, he took on flesh. The pain you are feeling, he felt it. I don't know if you are here. Jesus himself was challenged. He had to play by the rules. When I say by the rules, I mean he was in the flesh. So he did not come here and he was in the spirit hovering around. Are you hearing me? Because no entity can enter a territory unless it has a body that suits that territory. So in the physical realm, spirits are illegal without a body. So he was 100% man. That's what the Bible says, and he was sweating blood. When they nailed and hit on his uh, hands uh, with the hammer and the nail, blood came out. He was a man. Are you hearing me? But as he prayed, he started having access, not just to these uh, big uh, role models or prophets, but he had access to dimensions and realms in the spirit. Yes, Meaning prayer can usher you to your personal breakthrough. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Ah, yeah. yes, prayer can usher you to your personal miracle. If it is healing that you are trusting God for, it is always good before you come and say, Apostle, pray for me. You yourself pray for that healing. Before you say, Apostle, I'm trusting God for deliverance in this area. Exercise what we call believer's authority because every believer has authority in Christ Jesus. In Mark 16, Jesus said, these are the signs that will follow them. Who, who are these ones? Those who believe. Amen. In my name, they shall cast yes, out. Sir. Not that they, shall, they will battle with demons, evil spirits. They, sh they, they, they shall cast out. Are you hearing me? Yes, they shall heal the sick. Even if they drink deadly things, it shall not harm them. I said, Jesus, what is this? Then when I read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I understood that what Jesus was talking about in Mark 16 was believer's authority. So every believer has authority. But you will never see that authority until you understand what happens when you pray. The Bible says, and he was transfigured to bring metamorphoso. The word transfigured is metamorphoso. To bring that which is on the inside, outside. To make the inside align with the outside. I pray for you wherever you are. That it must never be said about you. That you were carrying a destiny of a lion but you died like a hyena. May it never be said that you could have been more than this. Ayah. Ayah. May it never be said about you that, oh, look at him. That guy, he had a destiny of a lion, but died like a rabbit. I pray that your roar will not be silenced. Jesus will not come until you roar. The world shall hear you roar. Oh, I, I don't think they're getting that prophecy. I, I don't think they're getting that declaration. That is more than what you think. Receive it wherever you are. So the world shall hear you roar. So I said, the world shall hear you roar. So and when rapture takes place, the world will know that yes, now we are going up. We are caught up. But this woman here, this man here, this couple here roared. So Hallelujah. Say, I hear you, Apostle. Hear you. That's why I want you to understand that every time you pray, not only are you aligning that which is on the inside to that which is on the outside, but when you are praying, you are building capacity. Amen. Uh, yeah. 
So every time you pray, he who prays builds up his capacity. How do I know that? You know what Paul said? He said, he who speaks in tongues, he who prays in the spirit, edifieth himself. There are times where we are edified by the spirit. And there are times where I can go to the secret place. I can go to the prayer room and I edify myself. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Holy Spirit, help us. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us today. Help us today. Hallelujah. Meaning every time you enter prayer, you begin to fly using what we call wings of the Spirit. Kandili <laughs> Barosh. No matter how weak, when you start praying, there is strength that will be released. You are edifying yourself. You can be somebody who, who is easily intimidated. You are a timid. But once you understand prayer, you will understand that, yes, I might appear this way, but there is somewhere I can withdraw strength. I can withdraw boldness. That's why the Bible says, and as they prayed in the book of Acts, after prayer, the Bible says, and they ministered the word in boldness. Where did that boldness come from? From prayer. From what? From prayer. Not only did they uh, give themselves to the teaching or continued steadfastly under the, the teaching or the doctrine of the apostles and in the breaking of bread, but also they were together in prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Imagine Jesus himself having a prayer life. Jesus himself having a prayer life. Yes, that even before his ministry began, he was led and he was in prayer. That when his ministry ended, he was in prayer. In Luke 22, verse 43, the Bible says, And while he prayed, an angel from heaven came down and strengthened him. Did you hear that? What that tells you then? It tells you that prayer releases ministering spirits. You can be ministered unto in prayer. A lot of people want to see ministering spirits, angels at work because they spoke a word. But in them, there is no prayer. Are you hearing me? I feel I'm talking to myself. I feel I'm talking. Maybe Momo. Momo is hearing me. I I feel I'm talking to Momo here. YouTube, I'm not seeing fire emojis. On Zoom, I'm not seeing fire emojis. Hebrews 12, 29 says, our God is a consuming fire. Somebody put put some fire emojis on the comment section. uh, Zoom is on fire already. I will not be surprised if something will happen to this TV. Because there's too much fire on on, on, on Zoom. YouTube, I'm not seeing fire emojis. There we go. That's more like it. You can't be here and you're in a corner like this. No. Be present. Hallelujah. Put some fire emojis right there. And let the devil know that you are not here by default. You are not here because you are sneaking or you are taking. You are here because you are here to fellowship. And that now puts you in a place in the spirit that is called one accord. You can be in a place where something is being released. But if you are not one with those that are ushering that thing, you will not katalambano. You will not partake. We are in one spirit, one mind, one accord. That's why the Bible says, open your mouth wide and I shall feel it. And then we come back and we say, the circumference of your mouth determines what God will put inside. So it is very important that every time you hear God speaks to you, you open your mouth and say glory. You open your mouth and say hallelujah. And when the word blesses you, never keep quiet. Are you hearing me? What shall we compare this generation unto? 
For they are like children by the play market. We pumped for them, but they did not dance. When the word is given unto you, you dance, brother. Let me give you the way that you'll understand. Or say it in a way that you'll understand. No matter how long a cow, Pastor Brian, has been giving you milk. If you need more milk, you need to know how to pull on the cow. No matter how blessed the man of God is with revelation. If you need more revelation that will alter your life, you need to know how to pull on the anointing. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Glory be to God. Those that are here with their spirits, with their minds, and with their bodies, hear me. This is my prayer for you. May you obtain the grace to pray. May you obtain, may you receive wherever you are the grace to pray. And not just to pray, but to pray the right way. In the name of Jesus. If you are under the influence of my voice and you are receiving what I'm saying right now, lift up your right hand and say, that is so. That is so. Glory be to God. Why you should pray. Pastor Brian, what I'm about to say <clears throat> is very, very powerful. Yes, it's very powerful. You can be a man of faith. Just hold on. You can be a man of faith. There we go. You can be a man of faith and not operate in faith. <laughs> you can be a woman of faith and never operate in faith. When you pray, it helps you to operate at the highest level of your faith. Prayer builds your faith. Jude 20. Jude 20. Listen to what Jude 20 says. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in, in the spirit or in tongues, it helps you to operate at the highest level of your faith. But I want you to notice or rather to pay attention to this. That does not mean faith comes by prayer. We know what Romans 10 says. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing of the word. Hearing. Hallelujah. But after faith comes, faith can be built. Faith can be protected, Pastor Brian. Yes, and what builds faith and what protects faith is your prayer life. That's why some people don't understand that today my faith was here. Yes, sir. It was as if you could face anything. Yes, sir. You were not afraid. There was no fear. Yes, sir. Because your faith at that time was in this level. Yes, sir. But the following week, you realize that what you could face then, you can't face now. You are still the same person, but there is something in you that does not have what it takes to face that which you could face then. So the problem is not that you have changed. Something happened to your faith. That's why there are times where you can go to somebody who cannot walk and say, in the name of Jesus, stand up. And the following day, you see somebody who's, who's, who can walk there and you can't even go closer. Is because at that time your faith was once here and now your faith is here. So prayer can guard, can build, can protect your faith. I know one who say, but where is it in the Bible that says prayer can protect your faith? Because where we just read, we read that the Bible says uh, faith can be built by prayer, not protect. Listen, don't be a baby. Don't be a baby. Listen with the ears of the spirit. Don't be a baby. 
Luke 22, verse 32. I don't want to talk, I'm not supposed to talk about this, and you know, but I just feel in my spirit somebody is asking, where, where can we see this? Is this even in the Bible? Listen, I'll never teach you things that are not there. I'll never teach you a doctrine that is not in the Bible. Okay, Luke 20. I said what? Verse 32. But I have prayed for you that your faith, that your faith, that your faith fail not. Who was Jesus talking to here? Peter. He said, I prayed so that your faith, not even you, but your faith. Meaning prayer can protect your faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Zoom was coming all right, but I think now Zoom. I'm not sure. It's so good to see you, Queen Woods. I don't know if Zoom is here. I think I'm talking to leader Veronica here. Are you guys here? YouTube, are you here? Imagine Jesus one time, he comes to Peter and he says, Satan asked for you, but I have prayed for you. Are you hearing me? But why did you pray? And what did you pray for? For his faith, not to fail. People don't understand that when Jesus was about to go, he was concerned about one thing. Not the house you are, going, you are living in or that you will have. Not even the car. Not even how many children you have. Not how many times have you blessed people. You know what his concern was? He says, when the son of man returns, will he still find faith? Yes, sir. So prayer can protect your faith. Yes, and that is what the enemy is after. More than anything, your faith. Yes, sir. So when you begin to pray, it helps your faith to be on a higher level. Are you hearing me? Amen. That's why the Bible then says it comes. You see, your faith is so important that when Jesus rebuked the angry storm, we know the story, ne? and the Bible says, and he asked them, where is your faith? <laughs> Are you hearing me? He says, ye of little faith. It comes down to our faith, brothers and sisters. And the Bible then has guts and audacity to say they're just. Oh, yes. The rushers yes, shall live mm. by faith. But what builds that up? Prayer. What protects that? Prayer. So if I'm going to live by faith, meaning faith is an oxygen mm. to a believer. Yes, sir. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Faith without action is dead. And without faith, one cannot please God. Why? Because it seems as if, you know, there is no life in that belief. Hmm. That's why Jesus said when they said, Lord, tell us, when will these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? In Matthew 24. It says, take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. You see, for years, I read that scripture thinking that Jesus was saying that many people will come claiming to be him. A lot of people today, they see people somewhere in Angola who says, I'm the Messiah. People say, you see, this is what Jesus talked about. No, that's not what Jesus was saying. Remember, context matters. We always have to check who Jesus was talking to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And how does it relate to us now? Because one thing about scripture, don't reason for it. Let it interpret itself. Are you hearing me? So let's break that down. I know you have time and you love revelation. So I can flow freely here. So let's break that down. When Jesus said, many shall come, blah, 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 and say, I am Christ. They shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. In fact, if we can put it on the screen for those that 
are here for the first time or if they've never read the Bible, so they have no idea as to exactly what are we talking about. Verse 5 of 24, of the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew. If you have it, give me thumbs up so I can start reading. Thank you, sir. Verse 25. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Are you hearing me? Yes, so as a, as a napio, as a baby in the Lord, <laughs> back then, I always thought that Jesus here was saying to the disciples, People will come pretending to be him. And they will deceive many. Are you hearing me? But as I went deeper into the scriptures, and I read that same scripture over and over again using different translations, I then realized by revelation that what the Lord was saying here was saying many shall come in his name. Are you hearing me? Yes. Saying he is Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not they are Christ. Hey. Uh, you're not getting it. Hey. Meaning they will come and shout Jesus. Mm. Talk about Jesus. Yes, but behind everything, there is a motive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But so that people cannot see them, they come in his name saying he is Christ. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, uh. Notice, if you may, he did not say, saying, I am Jesus. Yes, sir. Christ and Jesus are two different yes, things. So a lot of people would think when Jesus said, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. People are thinking, somebody will come and claim to be Christ. Nobody can claim to be Christ. Yes, That's why all the people, or most of the people that have come, they have claimed to be Jesus, not Christ. Yes, oh, you're not hearing yes, it. No, no. I think, I think people are missing it. Because Christ now speaks of the authority. Yes, That's why, Pastor Brian, in Caesarea Philippi, yes, in the book of Matthew chapter 16, yes. verse 13, he said, who do men say I, the son of men, am? Yes, they gave him the public opinion. Some they say you're Jeremiah. Some they say you're one of the prophets, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, but who do you say I am? Mm -hmm. And there was silence. And everybody was silent there. And Simon Bajona stood up and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, yeah. Jesus said, Oh, Simon, mm -hmm. flesh and blood mm -hmm. did not reveal this to you. Yes, you did not learn it from the University of Bible College or Trinity Bible College, mm -hmm. but my Father in heaven revealed it to you. Yes, are you hearing me? Oh, yeah. What was so special about Christ that when Jesus heard it, he had to change the name of Simon from Simon to Peter and give him keys that whatever he binds on earth shall also be bound in heaven. What's, what was so special about the revelation? Now, let's break it down. It's because the name Christ, he was only supposed to receive it after the cross. Because it is then Christ that introduces the gospel of grace. Jesus introduced the gospel of the kingdom. But Christ introduces the grace, of the, the, the gospel of, the, of grace. That's why if any man be in Christ, not if any man be in Jesus. Yes, Jesus was here to talk to the Jews. Christ was here to talk to all men. Oh, yeah. yes. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Nice. That's why, notice if you may, he then tells them not to tell any man. Yes, sir. Why? Because that name was reserved. For him. He had to resurrect. Are, are you hearing me? Amen. So when he said, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. He's talking about himself. That many shall come in his name, yes, saying, he, Christ, is Christ. Yes, so a lot of people will be deceived by that. Why? Because they are hearing Christ coming out of the mouth of a man. Mm. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters. Preaching Christ, preaching Jesus has nothing to do with how many times you shout his name in your sermon. You can shout his name 1,000 times in your sermon and still not be preaching him. But we preach Christ when we are able to reveal him with simplicity and clarity. When a stubborn heart feels like this is it, I need to turn now. I need to repent right now. 
where nobody is talking about a hell. But while is you are preaching Christ, somebody feels the love of God, sees the love of God. You don't have to threaten people for people to repent. When, when John spoke and Jesus spoke, they never said repent for hell is real. They said repent for the kingdom. Are you hearing me? Oh, I thought I was speaking to mature people. I, I thought this church was a mature church. New life. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I thought our people were matured. Or maybe today I'm in a wrong place. I don't know. Is this the new life church? Maybe K K K uh, Paul King is the only one hearing Apostle and, and Momo. And who else is hearing Apostle? Wave your hand. Nelly C. or Majola there. And Joanne uh, Sbongile. And uh, Moses is hearing Apostle as well. Amazing. Amazing. What about YouTube? Is YouTube also here? Uh, YouTube is here. Vumeka, Shedrick, Demika, Aria, uh, Adele Otto, Angel Lutuli, Robin Smith, uh, Mamilet Sakedi. Okay, a lot of people there. Sharon Mapha Mampane. Well, YouTube is also here. YouTube is also here. Um, Mary is also here. Uh, Rutando is also here. So uh, some names I can't read because the thing is moving so fast. Yeah, no, that's too fast. But hear me in the Holy Ghost. When you pray, something happens. And one of the things that your faith begins to move from one level to another. He prayed for Peter's faith. One of the reasons why you should pray is that prayer, not only does it edify you, not only does it um, uh, 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 increase the level of your faith, right? But prayer brings you to the perfect will of God. You begin to find yourself wanting to please God, to live for God. Not because it's something that your flesh desires. But because you are a man and a woman of prayer, that nothing excites you anymore except pleasing the Father. I don't know if that makes sense. You begin to lose appetite. That which used to make you tick does not make you tick anymore. So you then find yourself in the perfect will of God. That is powerful, man. You begin to Know the heartbeat of the Father. You are a woman, you are a man that spends time so much in prayer that you begin to know this is what the Lord in this season is doing. And when people talk about revival, you can interpret that move of God. Because a lot of people know about revival, Pastor Brian. They can say there is a move of God, but wait a minute. What is that move? For? Because God has been moving. <laughs> But why is he moving now? Because God does not just move for the sake of moving. That's why in our school that is coming, we'll touch on the seasons of God. Where we, we are going to learn, uh, on, uh, learn about um, how to interpret the move of God. Not just in a community, in a city, in a nation, but also in your life. Because not every season God wants you to buy a house. Ah, come on now. Every season you enter into, you're thinking, God wants you to buy a house. Ah, oh, no. That's for babies. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's for babies. There are seasons where God says, this season you are praying for this city. Yes, sir. Where it becomes something that God himself will trust you with. Yes, but if you are too busy, you know, uh, thinking that seasons means prosperity in the flesh. There are certain things that God will never give it to you, give, give them to you because he knows that even if I give them to you, you will be too busy focused on what you think a season is. Yes, when we say we are custodians of glory, we are not saying we are bowlers. Some of you, there are even angels that want to report to you. Can you believe that? But they can't because your prayer life is zero. 
Every time you pray for two minutes, Kalaba Sante, hey Lord, I love you. Two minutes, you look, what time is it now? Two minutes, I have prayed now. Nah, it's too much. Ah, I've passed 60 seconds. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. The Bible says an earnest prayer was made for Peter while he was in prison. But here's now what shocks me. The angel released him and Peter went to where they were praying. When he got there, they were still praying. <laughs> you didn't get it. So all this time, the angel is busy releasing him. They are praying. Until the answer knocked at the door. <laughs> what they were praying for ended up at the door, knocking. Peter could have went anywhere after being released because he knew that those who arrested him, if they were to look for him, the first place was in the church prayer meeting. So he went there again, not because he wanted to go there. Prayer summoned him. And it's because they were praying for him. So he was the answer they were praying for. Because in their prayers, they were saying, God, release Peter. So Peter could have went anywhere. But the reason he went to John Mark's house is because the Bible then says, and as he knocked, Rhoda heard him and they were praying. Rhoda went where they were praying. Yes, so that which they were praying for was knocking at the door. Don't play with prayer. I said, don't play with prayer. Oh, yeah. I said, don't play with what? Prayer. Don't play with prayer. Another point, when you pray, angels are dispatched. Yes, this is why you should pray. Hallelujah. We all know by now, we have already established that long time ago in our teachings, that everybody in Christ Jesus, according to Hebrews 1.14, you have an angel. According to Matthew 18 verse 10, you have an angel. And that angel is to minister to you according to uh, uh, Hebrews 1.14, according to Matthew 4 verse 11. Is to, in, is, is to minister to you according to Luke 22 verse 43. That angel is there to minister to you. Say, so I hear you, Apostle. But these angels, they don't just move at will sometimes. Prayer must summon them. Dispatch them. Prayer is like a map for them. It's like a navigator that they use. Are you hearing me? Yes, Gives them direction. Prayer constructs a road for them. They can never sometimes put on their battle regalia and begin to fight your battles without you praying. You know, sometimes it shocks me when people talk about spiritual warfare. And the reason why it shocks me is because so many people have so many things to say about certain things. They will say everything except what the Bible says about a particular matter. Does that make sense? They will say everything except what the Bible says about that subject. They will talk about something and you hear, mm, this is good, but what does the Bible say? When you read the Bible, then you realize the Bible is saying a completely opposite thing. From what they are saying. Yes, so spiritual warfare is very simple. When we say you are in a warfare or in a spiritual warfare, it's not you who's fighting. The moment we say spiritual, it's not you. An angel on your behalf fights. Amen. That's why Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Have you been in the spirit and you begin to fight and you begin? No. But you are in a warfare. You are wrestling. But how are you wrestling? There is somebody who looks like you, but this is now a spirit fighting that battle. Yes, sir. Ah. Hey. How do I know? The book of Acts chapter 12 says it must be his angel. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Ah. Hey. Even Jesus Christ. You see, there are people like, ah, even Jesus has his angel. He's, there is an angel called the angel of Jesus. That a lot of people today who are testifying that they've seen the Lord, they did not see the Lord. They saw the angel of the Lord. I will tell you today, 99.9999% of all people in the world who are saying they've seen the Lord, they did not see the Lord. They have seen the angel of the Lord. Jesus is seated by the right hand of the Father. But his angel can appear to you. And how do I know that they've seen the angel of the Lord? but they are thinking they've seen the Lord, is because even John, who the angel appeared to when he was in the island of Patmos, yes, in Revelation 19, 
Verses 9 going down. The Bible says, and the angel was standing. And who? John bowed to the angel. And he began to worship the angel. John was with Jesus for so long. That when he saw the angel, he had concluded, this is Jesus. But it was only when he was worshiping the angel, the angel said, wait a minute. I'm just an angel. Stand up. I'm your fellow servant. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So Jesus has his angel. There is somebody that says, Jesus has his angel. Where is it in the Bible? I told you. You better read your Bible. We did a teaching last week called Understanding Your Bible. It is very important for you to know the word. Go to Revelation 1.1. Just for the sake of those who are like, Apostle, please show us then. But I know most of you, you know, and you already know. So, but, you know, we have brothers and sisters who are here for the first time. Some, you know, they are here and they are not saved. So, you can't assume they know what we are talking about, right? So, but if they have it uh, right in front of them, it, it makes it easier for them to understand and to believe. The revelation, are we in Revelation chapter 1 verse 1? Give me a thumbs up if it's on the screen. Thank you, sir. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. So Jesus had a revelation. <laughs> to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel. Unto his servant, did you? <laughs> Listen. Listen, hey, this will bless you. I'm telling you now. The angel begins to tell him, you need to write letters to the seven churches, right? But listen to the verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. The angel is telling John. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Revelation 19. Listen to this. Revelation 19 verse 10. Are you there? Okay. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus. I'm not Jesus. I'm his angel with this testimony. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's why you cannot reject prophecy and be a follower of Christ. Uh -uh. The spirit of Jesus is not the apostolic. <laughs> I, 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 I wish you could hear me. You know what the Bible said? I know now I'm, I'm, I'm just going deep, but it will connect to what we're talking about. In the book of uh, Second Thessalonians, and you read chapter 5, verse 17, it says, pray without ceasing. Yes, but when you go down to verse 19, then you go down, you go down. The Bible then says, quench not the spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's see how you quench the spirit. Because people hear that verse and say, quench not the spirit. You know, as a young Christian, I used to ask myself, God has angels. God has has a son called Jesus, has a spirit called the Holy Spirit. How come out of all these things, he said, you can sin against God, you'll be forgiven. You can sin against the son, you'll be forgiven. But once you sin against the Holy Spirit, you cannot be forgiven in this life or the next. I said, why this one? Why the Holy Spirit? But anyway, since you know the answer, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, move out of uh, what we're talking about. I don't want to be off topic. I said what? First Thessalonians chapter 5, please. Yeah, it's first. I had said second. So First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. I had made a mistake there. Um, listen to what the Bible says in verse 19. Quench not the spirit. And I asked myself, how does one quench the spirit? Verse 20 answers you. Yes, sir. That's why we say scripture interprets scripture. In order for you to understand verse 19, read verse 18. For you to understand verse 18, read verse 20. <laughs> are, are, are we together? Amen. It says, despise not prophesying. Yes, so how do I quench the spirit? By despising prophesying. Yes, 
prophesying it. Despise not prophesying. I will not continue. I mean from there. But anyway, hear me. When you pray, angels, not only are they at your disposal, but angels are ready to move on your behalf. Because you are not the one fighting. Never think you're the one fighting. Daniel was the one praying in Daniel chapter 10. Gabriel was busy with the prince of the kingdom of Persia. Michael came down to fight the, king, the prince of the kingdom of Persia, who had detained Gabriel. Daniel is busy praying. He's in a warfare. He's the one praying. An angel is capacitated. So never be deceived. Your answer can leave God's hand and get to you after 35 years. Yet your answer left God's hand 35 years ago. So you are praying to God. God does not have your answer. Who has your answer in the angel? So the more you ignore prayer, the more delay. So it is not God who's delaying. It is not God who's not answering. It's you limiting your angel, stopping your angel. Because in the spirit realm, there are what we call spiritual roadblocks. Are you hearing me? <laughs> People of God, if you were to know that nothing leaves the spirit realm unless it's justified, unless it's approved. Eh, that's too deep, right? Yeah, no, that's too deep, man. Nah, that's, that's too deep. Nothing gets to the earthly realm and in the spirit, no one knows how it got here. Talk about a physical immigration, even in the spirit we have, where something must be justified and allowed access, given access. Even Jesus, what I'm about to say, if you're a baby, you might not hear me. Even Jesus had to be justified to come down. That's what the Bible says, a body you have prepared for me, meaning he was not a body. He was coming to take on the body. Are you hearing me? But in his coming, Jesus was justified. That's what the Bible says, when the fullness of time had come, the son of man. So there was order in it. Are you hearing me? So for Jesus to come, he was justified. I know somebody will say, but Apostle, what you are saying, no. Uh, what is that? Lord, help me here. Mm, Timothy. Are you guys getting tired? No, you are here, right? Yes, you are people of the word anyway. Yes, Hallelujah. You, you love God for his word anyway. Yes. Uh, did I give you a scripture or not yet? Not yet. So the book of Timothy. He learned to Vrenes first, chapter 3, verse 16. If I was standing up reading this scripture, I would have jumped already. If I was standing up. As a matter of fact, if these cameras could show me as I, you know, move, I would have jumped. This scripture is too much, brothers and sisters. It's too much. Listen to what Paul says. Ah, yeah. You see, in all his writings, Paul, this is the scripture. Say, oh, no. The first one is that one of if any man cannot provide for his family. And the second one is this one. All Paul's writings. This one here shakes me. Listen to what he says. And without controversy, meaning they can be controversy. <laughs> Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. He tells us that Jesus is God. Justified in the spirit. So Jesus had to be justified. Anything that is yet to be justified in the spirit cannot manifest. Oh yeah, you didn't hear it. I was not reading a scripture. I was telling you that anything that is yet to be justified in the spirit cannot manifest. So the Bible says, God was manifest in the flesh. Justified. The word justified there is the word approved. In the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world received up in glory or into glory. So Jesus had to be justified in the spirit. That's why nothing leaves the realms of the spirit without being justified to the realm of men. When it leaves the realm of eternity, which is the realm of God, it does not have to be justified. But once it leaves the realm of everlasting, which is the realm of angels, the spiritual realm, 
to the realm of men, it has to be justified. That's why the Bible says, and there were men who crept in and away. And because they did that, even the angels that left their estate, they were bound waiting for the final judgment. Because nothing leaves there without being justified. Say, I hear you. The, way, the day you take your prayer life serious, the realms of the spirit will start giving you feedback. Because prayer is a code that unlocks spiritual realities. The realms of the spirit will start communicating spiritual frequencies to you. I'm telling you, you will know you are not a prophet, but because of the reason and because of your prayer life, you are all of a sudden picking up signals. You are praying and you are like, mm -mm, let me check on my sister. Then you forget. Then all of a sudden, there is a burden in your spirit. Then you call your sister, are you okay? And the sister says, you know what, there is something that has been bothering me. And you say, I picked it up in the spirit. But listen to me, that thing right now is leaving you. How did you know? You did not hear God like, something is bothering your sister. No. The realms of the spirit gave you a feedback. Ah, yeah. We call it a burden. Of course, Paul calls it spiritual burden. Are you hearing me? And some of you, you'll be burdened and not know why you are burdened. And I will advise you right now, if ever you enter a moment and you feel burdened where you know something is wrong, but you don't know where, how, who, pray in the spirit. As you pray in tongues, images will come out. You begin to receive what we call prophetic impressions. Of course, Daniel calls it uh, visions of the mind. Prophetic pictures. It will be as if your mind now all of a sudden is thinking about your uncle who you have not spoken to in three years. It's not your mind, Tasha. It is your spirit now downloading, retrieving information that was given to your spirit from the realms of the spirit. That's why Paul says, I saw things that are not lawful. I heard things that are not lawful for me to utter. Not that necessarily God told him. He had. He could be in a place where they were talking and it had nothing to do with God. But the things he had himself, he had spiritual entities talking. He had celestial beings having a conversation. And for him to come down and tell us, he said, mm -mm, this is not lawful for me to utter. He said, I saw things that if I, would, I was to tell you right now, uh-uh, they will blow your mind. Are you hearing me? That's why John wept and one of the elders said, ah, man, cry not. For the lion of the tribe of Judah has conquered. Yes, the word elder there is the word throne, one of the thrones. Mm. Ah, I wish I could talk to you. Ah, I wish I could talk to you. Ah, I wish I could go there, feel it in my spirit. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Talk to me, Apostle. Another thing that is important about prayer, and this is why you should pray. Prayer not only does it give you the strength you need, in a sense of strengthens you, but prayer can go to the future and wait for you. That's why I always advise young people, if you have no kids, if you have no wife, if you have no husband, don't joke with your prayer life. Because the time you have now, in few years, you're not going to have it. Once you start breastfeeding as a mother, once you start working as a father, the time you used to have, you won't have it. That's why most people, believe it or not, you'll hear them say, when I was a young person, I used to spend 10 days in the prayer mountain. I used to pray for this time and for this length. Why? Because there are times or there are seasons where the spirit of prayer comes upon you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that is now to prepare the next 40 years of your life. Yes, and as a young person, whenever you hear that, don't joke around it. Yes, oh, they're not hearing me. Uh, yeah. Young people, I was trying to talk to you now. 
So prayer can go to the future. How do we know that? In John 17, Jesus said, I pray for them. And I pray for those who will believe. Who will? They have, they have not yet believed. Who will believe in my name? So prayer can go to the future. Amen. You can even pray for your grandchildren right now. While it's your grandchildren are not yet born. Amen. You can pray for your children, yet you have no children. Amen. Why? Prayer can go and protect children that are not yet born. Somebody say prayer. prayer. You can be in prayer and the blueprints of your family's destiny can be given to you. <clears throat> in a sense of, you start seeing things that your loved ones were uh, meant to receive <clears throat> that, never, that they never received. You start seeing things that were meant for them, but they never fathomed it. In prayer. Then you start realizing that there was more into this than what they have. And you yourself, and you begin to pray. Say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, Apostle. Rev Say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, Apostle. Say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, Apostle. Now, once in prayer you are given those blueprints, once in prayer you are given that map, you don't joke. Because sometimes that map will reveal to you why a curse stayed for so long in your family. Why people are not getting married. Why people are not staying in marriage if they happen to get married. Why people go up to go down. Why people easily give up. Why there's a spirit of premature death. Why people kill themselves in your family. You know, it can be revealed to you that even as you fight in prayer, you are no longer shooting in blanks. You are no longer fighting the enemy you are not aware of. Because it's very difficult to fight an enemy you have not identified. So in prayer, God can reveal a problem that has, has lasted for generations. That you yourself can begin to combat it face to face. I don't know if that makes sense. Amen. That's why you should not joke when it comes to prayer. Amen. What makes you think if the enemy fought those who came before you, he will not fight you, will leave you. Doesn't make sense, right? No, it doesn't. That's why my prayer for you today is that God will give you the grace to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord. And all altars that are challenging, that are fighting your freedom, will collapse. So. All altars that are fighting you so that you don't succeed in life, will collapse that is so. in the name of Jesus. That is so. Say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, Apostle. Activate your spirit man by the reason of prayer. Amen. So meaning prayer activates your spirit man. The dimensions of God are locked in your spirit. Amen. Hence Paul said, my spirit prayeth. Hiya. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he said, when I pray in the spirit, my spirit prayeth. Because there are dimensions of God that are locked in your spirit. Do you know that gifts of the spirit are activated when one prays? Amen. You'll be surprised you're moving in discernment, yet you know you were never in discernment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But now all of a sudden you are moving in discernment. Amen. All of a sudden you are picking up signal codes Amen. and you are up there. And you are beginning to tell, this is not of God. Yes, yes people are fighting, but this is of God. Yes, yes, people have what to say about whatever they have in their minds, but this is of God. Yes. Well, people are clapping for this, but this is not of God. Yes. I'm not talking about judging. A lot of people cannot descend but judge. That's why we have a lot of Christians today who can follow wizards and witches and not know that there is no God there. Yes. One of the things that you should always use as a measuring stick right to know or to measure if a man or a woman is from god is not what they demonstrate in a sense of you know demonstration of power you know prophecy miracles not because god can't do that we do that we we are people who believe in miracles in our church in our ministry we are a prophetic apostolic ministry are you hearing what i'm saying but that now is not something that you should use to measure to judge how close somebody is to God, but his word. 
Hallelujah. His word. And when his word is given, that word should bring men closer to him. That word should transform men. You know, there are, are people who are good teachers of the word. But the word will always point people to them at the end. Are you hearing me? That they will teach, but at the end, it will come back to them. It will come back to how powerful they are. It will come back to how strong they are in the spirit. It will come back as to without them, you cannot know God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, he didn't say I'm Christ. Meaning as long as I follow Paul, I'm following him because he's following Christ. But once I stop seeing Christ in Paul, there is no reason for me to follow Paul. I'm not following Paul because I love his dress code. I'm not following Paul because Paul drives good. I'm not following Paul because Paul has a big company. I'm not following Paul because Paul has influence. I'm following Paul because Paul is following Christ. So I'm not really following Paul. I'm following Christ by being under Paul. Because God always gives those that he himself has appointed authority over those that he's raising. That's why the Bible speaks about people who labor for us. It speaks about those who watch over our souls. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It says, honor your mother and your father. Then honor your parents in the Lord. I understand that. But once Paul stops following Christ, or once I stop seeing Christ in Paul, there's no need for me to follow Paul. Because from the first place when I followed you, I did not follow you because I loved your voice or I liked your voice. I followed you because I was seeing the men that I'm after, and that is Jesus of Nazareth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So without prayer, your spirit cannot be activated. Gifts cannot be activated. You'll find yourself judging instead of descending. You know you are a Christian who cannot discern when everything you do is based on what people say about a particular matter or a particular person. You see, one thing I prayed that God would deliver me from years ago was God deliver me from voices. I'm talking to somebody right now. Because people can hear all voices except the voice of God. <laughs> Are you hearing me, somebody? I want us to go into prayer. Don't leave this broadcast for anything. Pastor Brian, are you ready? I want us to go on prayer. But in our prayer, Mabuza, give him that, please. In our prayer, I want us to pray that God capacitate me. Capacitate me. Amen. But it's specifically in the area of your prayer life. Hallelujah. Amen. As you all know, that there is what we call the spirit of prayer. The Bible says, in our infirmities, in our weaknesses, the Holy Spirit. Prayer is so important that the Holy Spirit has to pray for us. When we say prayer is important, we are not joking. Imagine Jesus even today intercedes while he's in the right hand of the Father. That's how powerful prayer is. And as long as we are in the realm of men, we will need prayer. Say, I hear, you, I hear you, Apostle. Prayer is essential. An attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny. Every time you feel like praying and you don't end up praying, it should bother you. Something silenced you. You did not just end up not praying yourself. You were silenced. You were conquered. You were defeated. Because when the spirit of prayer comes on you, you all of a sudden feel like praying for no reason. And right there, 
there are things that always fight that. And you begin to reason on it, reason on it. And the more you think about it, chances are you're not going to do it. So once the spirit of prayer comes on you and you can pray where you are, pray. If you can move out, move out. Why? Because you are a custodian of glory. You are an agent of glory. You are an intercessor. You are somebody who stands in the gap. You are 24-7 on duty. So if heaven has to save somebody from an accident, heaven must trust you. Knowing that once we give her this information, she will do something about it. You might not know who you are praying for and why you should pray, but the moment you go in the prayer closet and you begin to speak in tongues, you are speaking mysteries unto God, but God found somebody to stand in the gap. Some people cannot be trusted with many small, small things. Why? Because their prayer life is take a taking. Say, I hear you, Apostle. So I want you today to pray in the Holy Ghost. It's one thing when I pray for you every service. Today, I want you to pray. And you are praying and say, oh Lord, capacitate my prayer life. Give me grace. And to be specific, grace towards prayer. Grace for prayer. Are you hearing me? May my spirit learn to pray. May I be able to pray. May I love prayer. May I pray until prayer starts praying through me. May I pray until I become prayer. That when I appear, prayer has appeared. Hallelujah. I refuse on your behalf in the year 2024. To repeat the same things and same mistakes and same things that happened in 2023. This year you shall hear God. This year you shall move in dimensions of the spirit. You shall access realms you have never accessed before. And it all starts in prayer. I don't believe God has brought us here together today and any other day. So that we could play and just entertain each other. No. You yourself are, some of you are growing spiritually. Your spiritual growth began the day God brought you here. Amen. Amen. And I want you to understand that that now will have to balance with your prayer life. Amen. Say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, Apostle. Say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, That's why we call it spirit of prayer, because prayer, Pastor Brian, is a spirit. Yes, sir. We always say, <clears throat> nothing wrong with the word, we are people of the word. Yes, but the word only, without the spirit of prayer, will cause you to dry up. Yes, but the spirit of prayer without the word will cause you to blow up. Yes, but the spirit of prayer with the word will cause you to grow up. Yes, <clears throat> are we ready to pray? I said, are we ready, church, to pray? Amen. I will also be praying for you. Expect a miracle today. So. Expect a breakthrough. So. Expect a change of story. So. Stubborn delays will be defeated today. So. Stubborn situations will be destroyed today. So. In the name that is above every name. So. The name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, begin to pray. Rekusata <laughs> 
Rakasata Pakato, Rikete Lebronta Akra Liga Dosa, Rakasedia Tusa Akra Liga Baraya, Rekese de Brekedia Kufra Akra Liga, Satusa Akra Liga Anskomanre Enfeliga Baradosa, Rakasata Bahakaduska Prante Ekede, Rikeve Ekaduska Talege Bronte Enskedea, Rakasede Gevegeduska Andre Ekataya, Rakasata Prakaluga Akra Liga, Rekese de Begedia Sobe, Rakasuta Anta Kaliga Anskomaya, Rekese de Brekedia Kosa Akra Liga, Refranto Onska Baralia Tosa Lagaye, Akino Monska Baralia Tosa Laba, Rakasata Bahakado, Rekete Gebreke Liga Anskataya, Reketo Kopra Akra Liga Doskabaya, Rakosa Taliga Manre Eveliga Bronde, Esuda Anta Kaliga Askovaye, Rekese Liga Akatoskaba, Raka Saliga Akra Luga Doja, Reke de Gebe Ekaduska, Reka Saliga Anta Koela Manre, Reka Saliga Beredia Koja, Arekonda Anska Manre Ekaduske, Reke Ve Ekaduska Taliga Brande, Raka Saliga Brante Gedia Soa, Arekaduska Taliga Monre, Raka Saliga Baradoska, Ekano Umbra Anskebea, Rakosa Takalige Eka Baradoske, Reka Duska Taliga Monre, Raka Saliga Brakado, Reke Sedia Kosa Akataya, Reko Saliga Bronde Enskatea, Raka Saliga Baradoskata, Ika Saliga Brekeduske, Rika Hadu Oska Manre, Raka Katuska Taliga, Ralige Vende Enskobaya, Raka Saliga Tuska Beredia, Raka Saliga Akatuska Baya, Ika Haranuza Akatoya, Eberaluda Anskabaya, Ika Hano Hona Enskebe, Reke Saliga. In the name of Jesus, we have arrived with the spirit of power. We have arrived with the spirit of dominion. In the name of Jesus, we are taking over nations through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Manka branda lika baronde elevaria sota kila baraya Atlanta kila baronze veida akladisha veida akrahiva kila baronde kaliga baraya veida akosaya. We are protected from the wickedness of men. In the name of Jesus, all plans of the evil one, all plans of the enemy, they've been turned upside down in the name of Jesus. In our going in, in our going out, we are protected in the name of Jesus. Rakakakaduskataya, Iranto compre eladia saye, Arrelevenre escaparadoskataya, Erekelevenende entoko, Arika digevando oskadaya, Ika hasuda baradia saye, Eko sotoko paraliga, Arreke de gebekaduskataya. Mekusa takadia so, arrekete geve ekadoska, rekete ge bronde entaliga, rakasa digeve ekado, rekeve ge digivando onske, arrigidian sakae, irigidigiando confre elabaya, rakase de geve gede, isata pronta ekaparaye, aruka askata, igidigivasco, akato ompre elahare, arrekete ge vonde, sete breke liga akarusta, akus adaye, impa. Aruda Manra Akaso, Rakasuda Akatea, Irigadia Fronte Ekatuskatae, Rekatuska. In Jesus' name. That is so. In Jesus' name we pray. That is so. Somebody lift up your right hand and say, That is so. That is so. I feel the spirit of prayer manifesting right now. Hallelujah. Let me quickly explain what was happening for those who don't understand. When we pray in tongues, there is no need for interpretation. There is no scripture for that. So anybody that tells you that if somebody prays in tongues, they are to interpret. It's not true. When you prophesy in tongues, or when you are speaking to somebody or a group of people in tongues, you are to interpret. But if it's communication between you and God, you are speaking mysteries unto God. Yes, sir. Why will you pray in tongues if you yourself can hear what you're saying to God? Why not pray in your language? Yes, 
If it is something you can download with your understanding, why not say it? You understand? So it is tongues because these are mysteries to God. But if I prophesy in tongues, the reason why I'm prophesying in tongues, listen, I've seen somebody speak in tongues and then try to interpret. Right? That's okay. It can, they have, the Holy Spirit can give utterance to that person. It's okay. They can give interpret, the Holy Spirit can give interpretation because he can do anything. But according to the scripture, when I speak in tongues prophesying, somebody must interpret. There must be an interpret. Yes, because somebody has been given understanding of what I'm saying. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. That's why it says gift some interpretation of tongues and some diverse. So they speak and the other ones they interpret. But when we are in prayer, there is no need for you to explain yourself. Are you the devil to know what I'm saying to God? Why, why, why do you want to know what I'm saying to God? Unless I'm talking to you in tongues, then you can say, wait a minute. I'm not hearing what you're saying. Glory be to God. Amen. Then I have to interpret. Now you know. Yes, sir. There are there are two, you know, there are three different tongues in the Bible. And let me not talk about that. But anyway, because of time, say, "I hear you, Apostle." I hear you, Apostle. Say, "I hear you, Apostle." I hear you, Apostle. Get your glass of water. I'm going to pray for the glass of water. Remember, I had given an instruction on Sunday. Yes, thank you, Uncle Mabuza. I had given an instruction on Sunday that you are to have a glass of water. Your own water, wherever you are. If you don't have, it's still okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Why water? This is a token right here. This is a sign. This is a conchway. Are we together? Um, I'll give an example that you will understand. Have you been in a place where there is a plaque? where you can plug your phone and charge it immediately. You have a twin plug, you put a twin plug, you put your phone charger, and you charge your phone. Have you been there before? Yes, sir. But have you also been in a place where you are far from the twin plug, but there is a twin plug? But now, you need an extension. Yes, sir. You then plug the extension, and then you put on your twin plug, then you charge from where you are. Now, if we were to disconnect the, twin, the, 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 the extension to the main plug, do you know that your phone will still be connected, but your phone will not charge? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that twin plug now becomes an extension. Yes, sir. That whole thing also becomes an extension. So we call it an element of power. Yes, sir. Not power. An element. What transports power? So this is an element of power. Not power. <laughs> it's like Holy Communion. It's an element of power. Amen. When Paul's handkerchief healed the sick and, his, and the aprons and handkerchiefs were taken to the demon possessed and demons checked out, it would have been stupidity for you to hold on an handkerchief and say, oh, there's power here. No, there is power. But that's not power. It's an element of power. Yes, Are you with me? Peter's shadow healed the sick. So there are things in the prophetic that when God gives an instruction, when they happen, they even boost our faith. <laughs> you know why? In the, old, in the New Testament, the disciples of Jesus, after receiving power in Matthew 10, when Jesus said, go and heal the sick and go and do one, two, three, four, five. And, was, and the disciples healed the sick and anointed them with anointing oil. And says, if anyone is afflicted, let him call the elders of the church. They will come and anoint him with anointing oil. They will pray for him, of course, but they will anoint him. You know why? It's not because anointing is power. Anointing oil is power, sorry. Not, it's not that anointing oil is power. Yes, Contains power. Amen. Amen. I don't know if that makes yes, sense. Sir. Yes, sir. Problem starts when you base your faith in that. Mm -hmm. So this is a prophetic instruction. Yes, Just as the Lord spit on the ground put mud on the face of the man and said, go and wash by the pool of Siloam. Yet when he met others, he just said, your faith has healed you. So today, the Holy Spirit had given us a clear instruction. And we said this over and over, even on Sunday we talked about it, that you have to have a cup of water. We know what water represents in the spirit. We know what water is symbolic to in the prophetic. Amen. Are we together? Yes. Sir. yes. So I want to pray for your cup. 
O water. That by the Spirit of God, as you drink that water after prayer, whatever used to stop you will not stop you anymore. It doesn't matter what it is. If you were sick in your body, you receive healing. If you are tormented, you shall be set free. And you need to believe that. Some of you, you'll be the one drinking the water, but your child, whose mind was stolen by the enemy, will come back. Your husband who left for no reason will come back knocking. So. I'm telling you now, once we, once we go this direction, we, we, we expect nothing but testimonies. Oh, yes. so. Are you hearing me? Yes, Are you hearing me? Amen. Say, I hear, you, I hear you, Apostle. So I want to pray for that water. I know people will ask, should I finish it now or should I drink? Listen, there is no clear instruction on that. It's up to you, but you need to drink today. Because <laughs> I know people like, should I finish all of it? It's, it's entirely up to you. Should I drink it tomorrow? It's entirely up. Should I take it to work? It's entirely up to you. But you need to drink as, as soon as we are done praying. That is your water. So nobody gave you that water. So there is nothing to worry about. Say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, Apostle. And I pray that you will be strengthened in your body. You will be strengthened in your spirit. In the name of Jesus. And your appetite for anything that is not of God will be quenched. And your hunger for God will increase. Your appetite for the things of God, for the word of God, will increase. And those that are trusting God for financial release, financial breakthrough, so to say, financial freedom, where people were laboring, are laboring, but they are not seeing results. Where people are working hard, but drowning in the pool of debt, working hard today to pay for yesterday, where they've lost the dignity because of debt. I pray that as you take this water today, as you drink that water, your case will be settled. So. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. For everybody under the influence of my voice, I pray for every couple. Right here, right now. That, that, that water inside the glass, inside the bottle, it's losing its earthly essence. And it's taking on heavenly essence. Nice. There is an unction that is coming upon the water right now. That Father, upon drinking the water, in the spirit there will be a shift. Things will turn around. Things shall not remain the same again. And if there are things that are meant to come out, let them come out today. If there were things in their bodies that were never meant to be there, if there are things and there were things in their bodies that gave license to succubus and incubus, spiritual husbands and spiritual wives, let those things come out. That is so. Somebody will begin to sleep from today. That is so. Somebody will begin to rest from today. That is so. The spirit of anxiety, depression, oppression will leave your people today. That is so. But they will serve you with peace. Peace that surpasses men's understanding. Peace that will be transferable to their children and their children's children. Peace that no amount of situation can challenge and conquer. I declare and I decree financial release, financial freedom to those that are trusting you for it. I declare healing. To those who are trusting you for it. So. Let there be deliverance of the, of the mind. So. Their minds will stop wandering. So. In the name of Jesus. So. I pray that those that are called by you, O oh God, to do your work, to be your ears, to be your eyes, to be your mouth, to be your hands, to be your legs, 
Father, upon and after drinking the water, the unction to function will come upon them. That's so. Unction to function in what you have called them for. That's so. What you have called them to do. That's so. In the ministry you have called them in and to. That's so. In the name of Jesus. That's so. Let there be restoration. That's so. Let there be all round restoration. That's so. Let there be restitution. That's so. Restoration of years that the locust, the kinkaweb, has eaten. That's so. Restoration of opportunities. That's so. Seasons that were meant to change their lives that were missed. I declare now a restoration. That's so. Destiny help us. That's so. Father, they shall become the testimony of your glory. That's so. Their face will shine. That's so. Where others are rejected, they shall be accepted. That's so. Where others are laboring, they shall be sponsored by favor. That's so. Where others are tolerated, they shall be celebrated. That's so. In the name of Jesus. That's so. Doors that they did not know existed shall open for them. That's so. I stand against debt. That's so. I stand against this burden that has been troubling many under the influence of my voice. That's so. Just as you did it in the past, God, may you do it for somebody here today. That's so. Let 2024 be a year of a turnaround. That's so. A year of blessings. That's so. A year of excellence. That's so. And a year of greatness. That's so. To your people. That is so. In Jesus' name. That is so. Say that is so. That is so. Well, if you have your order with you, you can go ahead and drink your order. It's your order anyway. Please be seated. It is done. Some of you right now, some of you right now, you feel like throwing up. Right now, you feel as if something, for you to know something is taking place. You feel as if you have been drinking water. But right now, you feel as if something is stuck here, coming out, or something wants to come out right now. And if you are feeling that, just know that there is a shift, there is a turnaround, something is taking place as we are speaking. It would be as if the water just stayed somewhere here. And it's not a joke. I'm telling you. Yet you are drinking water, you're used to drinking water, water goes down. But this time around, it's as if the water is just somewhere here. You see somebody saying, I'm vomiting. You see? Somebody saying, I feel like vomiting. Another one just said, I'm vomiting now. Somebody saying, I'm healed. I feel it as you're talking, Apostle. There, there it is. Even Queen Woods there. You see? I'm, I'm telling you now. Ah, somebody saying, I feel like going to the toilet to release myself. And I've never felt this way. It's because something is happening. Distance is not a barrier. You see, things of the spirit, you just need to believe. Amen. They are foolishness to those that, you know, are perishing. Those who have no understanding for them. It will be like, what are they doing? Are they okay? Why would they sit in a in a place and all of a sudden they're drinking water. Listen, there was an angel that would come and stay up the wood. Whoever entered first was healed. Amen. Things of the spirit, man, they are not to make sense to people who are not of the spirit. Amen. And we are not to try our best to explain things of the spirit to people who are not interested in actually understanding things of the spirit, but are interested in criticizing things of the spirit. Amen. See, it is done. I feel it, Apostle. Hallelujah. I am delivered. You see, some of it feels like the water is stuck in my chest. I told you. And the reason being is because, is because something is taking place in your spirit. It is one of the signs that something is taking place. You usually drink water and it goes down. That is your water. You see, if you are given perhaps that water, you think uh, maybe they've put something in the water. We just prayed for it. Amen. 
Someone say, I feel something hot spreading through my body. Yes. No more sorrow. Since I started following this ministry, my life has changed. Glory be to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, it is done. Nice ah, you see, I had breathing problems, but just now I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, healing is taking place. Amen. Healing is taking what? Yes. Place. And as we continue to pray for you, I know that God himself will do what only him can do. Thank you. Somebody say your revelations are always relevant. Thank you. Thank you. I want us to give, but can I quickly pray, please? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man and every woman under the influence of my voice. That as they honor you with, your, with their substance and with their offering, good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. Father, cause men to come and give and minister unto them. In the name of Jesus, I pray that even things that looked impossible, may they become possible. May help from every side come. May destiny help us be released. In the name of Jesus, let there be increase in every area of their lives. I declare nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. In Jesus' mighty name. May you push them and take them to the land of more than enough. It is in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless every hand today that is giving. And remember every hand that is giving. In Jesus' name. That is so. Giving time. Blessing time. Go ahead and Honor God with your substance. If you're coming here for the very first time, we have our giving platforms right on your screens, and we have uh, a new cash app user, so to say, like uh, username, right? Yes. So uh, from New Life World to New Life Global Church, am I correct, Tim? Yes. So cash app, you can go ahead and do that, is because we... We are still actually even putting this one together nicely, but you can use that one today and you'll use it, of course, another time. It's because we are doing it uh, proper because we had people who are scamming people all over the world using our details. Hallelujah. Using the name of Mizum's marketing credit, telling people this, if you saw this cash app and all of those things. So listen, that's not us. You know, when you I post something and then you comment it, then there's a reply from me. It's not me. It's not me. Our YouTube has a tick on it, right? What do you call that tick? A verification or something? Yeah, verification, right? So it's not us. So hence, we had to uh, also cancel that one and work on this one. So uh, let's go ahead and honor God with our substance, with our giving. Amen. Because I'm just reading people's testimonies right there. Somebody had an ear problem on the left. But after they drank the water, that uh, sound they, are, they were hearing Amen. stopped. Amen. God is so real. You just have to believe him. Amen. And give him glory, you know, and glorify his name and honor him and praise him for for being faithful. God bless everybody that is giving. God bless you, Anastasia. God bless you, Rifilwe. God bless you, Enad. God bless you, Kyle Johnson. God bless you, Daniel M.M. Uh, God bless you, Grace L.L.L. I'll see. Hallelujah. God bless you, Stefan Mahone. God bless you, Amber Hinton. God bless you, Maria. I can't pronounce that other one, Maria, but we can try. <clears throat> Guys, 
God bless Maria Krasazonoska. Hmm. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. You know, once a name or a surname does not have vowels, ah, becomes, hey, it becomes a problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you speak in tongues. Hey, Rodri, Rodriguez. Ah, no, that one I can say it because there is Rodriguez who plays, you know, football. So God bless you, uh, Diane Rodriguez. God bless you, Asa Perez. God bless you, Peggy Knight, saying excellent, great, and flourishing. Hallelujah. God bless every man and every woman that is giving right now. Amen. We have so many people. God bless you, uh, uh, Ntanta. God bless you, Maluke. God bless you, Larry Crowder. God bless you, um, Veronica. God bless you, Belmonte. God bless you, Memory. God bless you, Machawira. Uh, Riguel Carey. God bless you, Kinele Tau. God bless you, Robinson Toval. Hilary Asidu, uh, Lynette Nicholson, God bless you, Eugene Laneback, God bless you, Dominance Maurice, God bless a lot of people are giving. And one will say, but what about me, Apostle? Why are you not calling me? It's because that's what I'm seeing on the screen right now. So <laughs> there's a lot of people, hallelujah. Go ahead and honor God and God bless you with your substance. Your giving does not just uh, help us, you know, stay connected in terms of with you online and all of that. But it takes care of so many things, even in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. And right now, if there was a time for you to partner, if you're not a partner, as a matter of fact, I'll encourage you to become a partner with this ministry. If this ministry has been blessing you, this is the right time for you to become a partner. Um, just like in the times of Elijah, they went to Elijah and said, Master, the place we are used to fellowshipping uh, at is now small. And, uh, you know, they went to borrow some few things, access to come to go and cut wood and all of that so that they could extend. But I want you to understand that uh, that was very prophetic of them. So even us right now, in, in our sanctuary, the place has become very small. We definitely need proper, you know, air conditioning there. It's very hot. Uh, this past Sunday, if you were there, you will know that people were squeezed because there's no space anywhere. Outside as well, people sit outside overflow. If we are to establish overflow, we need a proper overflow where people have screen or projector, whatever you call it, with proper sound, with proper tent, with proper seating. It's too, big. It's too small now. The place, we, we, we got in there, we have a year in there. And we thought, you know what, uh, because we are far from houses, I'm sure the closest house is like maybe five, no, six or close to 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers away because it's an industrial area. So there are no houses. So we're not like, boom, inside a community. No, we're in an industrial area just like Johnny was in the wilderness and people went to see him. So, but the place has become small. There is no space at all, even outside. So it's full. Uh, kids ministry, we just extended now. And we came back. My wife went to anoint the little ones last week. And she came back and she gave a report. And she said, you know what? The place has become small. Amen. You know, and we, we just extended. And it's too small now even for, for children, the Sunday school quest. So your giving does so many things, right? It does what? so many things and your partnership as well because we have people who want to come to church but don't have what it takes is very far from for them so we have transport now and i'll urge every kingdom financer calling on all kingdom financers radical givers right give us with a mission that every sunday will ask you to partner with something hallelujah whether it's ten dollar every sunday I think we have four Sundays a week, and a month, sorry. It will be $40, whether it's $100, right, a week, every Sunday, or whatever that is, so that we are able to get bars or these things to bring these people to church because they want to be in the sanctuary. So partnership works. Paul himself had partners 
In Luke 8, verse 3, Jesus had partners. The Bible says, and they ministered unto Jesus. They partnered with Jesus. The Bible says, with their own money. That's Luke 8, verse 3. Hallelujah. So imagine the minister of Jesus had partners. What more about us this time? With so many things happening. Technology and everything. Right? So there's just so much that is, is needed. Glory be to God. But your partnership makes it happen. Our church has stuff. Hallelujah. There are people who have dedicated themselves into serving God 24-7. Right. So, some they took their skills and brought them into the house of the Lord. So that the house of God can advance. So, you know, all those things. So, your partnership helps. So, never underestimate your giving. It doesn't matter how small or how big you think it is or how small you think it is. Just be a giver. And tell yourself that this year, you are going to be a kingdom finance. Don't be a kingdom financer by talk. Or wait for God to do something then. You are not a kingdom financer when it's like that. If you have, so that you can give. And you say, I'm a kingdom finance. <laughs> a kingdom financer means, even when I don't have, I will make means so that the kingdom can move forward. I'm a kingdom financer. That's what the Bible says, if you are faithful in the little one, little things, I will trust you with greater things. So being a kingdom financer, that's where it starts. And most kingdom financers, sometimes how do you know you're a kingdom finance? When you have a heart to give, but your finances are not saying give. Or rather, they don't look like something that you could take from. But your heart says give. Because the Bible in the book of Romans chapter 12 talks about gifts that are given by God, operations. And giving is one of them. It says to some, gift of giving. Amen. Hallelujah. So people have taught against giving so much. And everybody, I will tell you now, everybody who has taught against giving is somebody that you should run away from. According to the book of Acts, we know the Bible now. We know the Bible. We know what giving does. Hallelujah. We, we know what it does. And we know how powerful giving is. We know how, a, how giving can uh, 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 alter your child's life without him being a giver but you being a giver. Are you hearing me? We know how giving can release an angel. Acts 10, in the days of Cornelius. His giving had become a memorial. We know how powerful giving is. We saw it in the days of Abel. According to Hebrews verse, chapter 11, verses 4, it says he gave a more excellent sacrifice. He offered a more excellent sacrifice. That the Bible says, him being dead, yet speaketh. That he obtained, the Bible says, witnesses. Hey, that's too much. Every time we give, do you know that there are angels watching who are responsible for that? Where are you giving? When? What time? And that becomes something that is recorded. Do you know that? Exactly. Hallelujah. Some of you don't understand that an attack on your giving life. Somebody comes, oh no, don't give tithe or don't give this, don't give that, don't give that. And instead of you reading, instead of you hearing God's plans, you are now saying, okay, he says I must, he says, no. Are you hearing me? Some people are against empowering the gospel. And they know that without finances, they go ye unto the world, will just be a song. But not something that will materialize. Be a radical giver. Be a radical giver. Hallelujah. I'm teaching you a mystery just as I've taught you the way as well in so many ways and in so many things. I'm teaching you about the mystery of giving. No matter how small it is, be a giver. Because nothing finishes in the hands of a giver. Appreciation is qualification for multiplication. And in your giving, you are saying, thank you, God, I appreciate you. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Giving is our only way to abundance. Amen. So, God bless everybody that is giving. 
and become a partner. If you want to be a partner and the Lord is touching you, how, how do we do it? Guys, how can it be? No, I'm not familiar with that. Are there numbers that they can? So there are numbers on the screen. Can I, is there somebody, is there a way that we can have access myself or the names of the people that today you, the team will receive, they'll be sent to me as well? All right. Um, if you would love to partner with us, partner with New Life, month to month or week to week, or you can be a once-off partner, it's okay, like once-off, you partner with a, whatever you can for the whole year or six months, or you want to be a monthly partner. You know, you commit yourself that every month I'm going to give this as a partner and as a kingdom financer. Uh, there are numbers on your screen. Just send your name and also how much you'd love to partner with. How much does partnership start? From? Sorry? $10. Our partnership starts from $10. Hallelujah. I always advise people that it's important for you to partner. And not only with one ministry, unless you are, you know, benefiting from one ministry. Sometimes you can partner with the man of God and partner with the ministry. Say, this one is for the man of God. This one is for the ministry. Or this one is for the ministry. Then there is another singer who blesses your soul. Reach out and find out, how can I partner with this person? Yet you are not a singer, but there is the grace of God upon that person that you yourself desire, long for. The reason why I'm saying this is because Paul spoke to partners and said, you are partakers of my grace. So partnership is like a bridge that gives you access to grace upon somebody. So even people who sing, don't, don't, don't downplay the mystery and the power of partnership. Are you hearing me? I don't know if, they, I don't know if it makes sense to them. So go ahead. I want to see new partners today. So go ahead and send your name and say, I want, and this is the right time to partner. We are in January. Amen. Glory be to God. Come on now. Come on now. If you're not yet a partner, go ahead. And if you are a partner and you feel like, let's take this to the next level. Our church has become small. I don't even know what to say. Amen. Because we just moved in there, in the headquarters. We just extended December. We brought down a wall. We increased. Last week, Sunday, there is no space. There is no space anyway. It's just that we don't get to show you sometimes outside, but it's, it doesn't make sense. The cars, they reach up the hill. Everywhere, there is no space. And the name of Jesus is being lifted. People are being healed. Lives are being restored. And you are making it possible. You are making it happen. Don't you think that whenever God heals somebody, he will always remember you? He will. Hallelujah. When people are receiving the Lord Jesus there, you are serving, but you are serving in that ministry, new life that you are part of, that is blessing your soul, but with your substance. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody saying, I've been waiting for this opportunity. Uh, amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, uh, we also have the school of ministry, the, the online global school of ministry 2024. It's a two days uh, thing that is happening this February, the 2nd and the 3rd of February. If you have not registered, go to the website right now, drmeesschoolofministry.com and sign up. Do it today, sign up. Hallelujah. And you can do it if cash app, uh, something that you can use you can use cash app and the team will you i think you'll send proof or something and the team will uh, reach out to you or send you the feedback i don't know yeah so they know how to handle it so i'm excited about that yeah. hallelujah have you guys been blessed oh, yes. i wanna <clears throat> i want us to start praying for south africa in our prayers Yesterday night, I saw a vision. In this vision, I actually thought it was the end of the world. I saw blood. 
I saw people being hurt. I saw soldiers going around trying to bring peace. I saw soldiers just coming. I saw a big thing happening. So pray for South Africa. I saw people fight physically. Um, I saw red fighting against green. I saw green fighting against blue. I saw blue fighting against yellow. So it's very, very important that we pray for South Africa. Are you hearing me? To an extent that there is a, a political icon, star, that will not even finish with us this year. That's how deep the, 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 the vision was. You know, and also, there is a, a xenophobic spirit that we need to cast out of our nation. Are you hearing me, somebody? I saw buildings burning. You know, not because something happened. People intentionally did that. I saw people angry. I saw people saying, no, how come? How come? Hear me. We need to pray for this country. I saw even people within the country saying, you know what? From now on, us who will do our, our own things, who will do us. Are you hearing me? So we need to pray for this country. And let's pray for South African artists as well. I said it on the crossover. Uh, let's pray. And uh, we must put in our prayers, even these young guys who sing and young women who sing, they might be singing secular music, but souls are souls. Are we together? Souls are? Souls are souls. So we must pray for them that the hand of God must be upon them. I spoke about a scorpion biting itself. So... It is important for you to understand where we are coming from and where we are going in the spirit. There is a TV presenter. There is a Mark. I'm not sure if I should say on his. Yeah, his. His head. I don't know if I should address him as his, but it's his anyway. On his head. His, his head. I saw a Mark. Um, this, this, this man that says the Lord, he should, um, he should actually turn to God while it's this time. You know, he's a presenter like you guys. You know him, of course. I don't want to mention names here. You know I've been in trouble so many times previous years of calling names straightforward. And people, every time something happened, they would think I had something to do with it. You know? Um, so we pray. We continue to pray for, for him. He's a TV presenter. He's famous. He's known. He's everywhere. Uh, to be exact, he stays in Gauteng. Um, yeah and Gauteng within the city of Johannesburg. So now I've gone deeper. So this is not Pretoria or wherever, just within that. TV presenter, very famous guy, very famous. Travels a lot as well, as much as I know, as far as I know. There's a mark on his head. Uh, this mark has been there. Uh, this vision, I received it last year, August, that 2024, uh, an arrow will be shot at him. Yeah, to take him out. So... Um, it has been there since 2018, but the Lord has been giving him more time, more time, more time. And it seems as if he knows that God wants him to tend to him, but he feels he has built so much reputation on who he is that if he can just tend now, it will mess up his life. So let's pray for that guy. And um, not only that, I told you what's going to happen in the U.S. on the 31st. Uh, it's going to happen. I thought it was going to happen around April. That's why I didn't give a date, but I said it's going to happen. This is going to happen just uh, towards the end, end of February. There's going to be a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, civil that we spoke about that will take place. So we pray for, for USA as well. Just going to 
your summer and their time of spring or something because now they're in winter, right? Just after, because they're finishing, so to say. But just after that, when, they, when the sun finally hits, that will start. Are you hearing me? Amen. And a lot is going to happen in the month of February. A lot, a lot, a lot. You just hear that there was this that just went inside the water. And you will not know a big thing go inside like, but how? And the next thing you hear that who, who uh, you know, who was like this, shot himself. Then you'll be like, ah, this guy, this businessman is an entrepreneur. How did he shoot himself? How did he commit suicide? We, we saw it in the spirit, as you know. But when you see this, some of these things are automatic. You can't change them. Like when I was telling you a uh, year before about the pandemic, the virus that was there, everybody thought I was crazy, isn't it? People attacked me when I told them that the Lord showed me 2020, this was going to happen. People are going to die because of this. There's a demon that has been released. People will lose their jobs. People attacked me and say, I'm a prophet of doom. When that happens, they went back to the same video. They were watching it and people were like, oh my goodness, Lord. Listen, it's like when I spoke about the USA, that the woman is coming and a man is coming. This will be the president's. People attacked me and said it has never happened. One, two, three. When it happened, they're like, oh my goodness, it happened. Right? So, what I'm telling you now, when it happens, don't think, okay, how does it help me? It doesn't help you. It just shows you that God is more updated. This should even actually boost your faith. Not because people are suffering. We have already spoken about how great this year is. There's is going to be a wealth transfer. That one is automatic. And I'm telling you, if there is a year, year where people are going to rise financially, it will be this year. Yes. You are a believer. The Bible says when darkness covers the whole earth, you shall rise and you shall shine. That's, That's what the Bible says. Arise and shine for your light has come. That's this year your light has come. Your light has come. So. I'm telling you, there is a year where a lot of believers are going to be millionaires this year. That is so. And a lot of believers need not to sleep, need to pray, need to be awake. Are you hearing me? But I saw it in the spirit. A lot of believers who say enough is enough this year. Ah, they will, ah, no, they will not be apologetic. Believers will not hide anymore. Young people are coming back with so much fire. We have already talked about it. It's going to be everywhere. Revival has already started. God himself has started it. Are you hearing me? And there's going to be a strong move of God in India this year. India will experience a very strong move of God. And also we need to pray for um, uh, Gabon. I saw something terrible happening in Gabon. Something terrible. And this will happen February. Gabon, something you, when, when it happens, please, there is something terrible. And it's political. But lives are at stake in Gabon. So you, 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 let's pray for Gabon as well. As much as we pray for all countries and all nations to know God and to come to the full knowledge of Jesus Christ. We stand against war. I've been telling you about war since 2021. That war is coming. And of course, it was supposed to happen 2028, the war that I was talking about. Uh, honestly, 2028, Apostle, does that mean rapture will not have taken place? Rapture can take place even now. Right. But if it happens that the Lord does not come, which I believe is coming very soon, this war was supposed to happen in 2028. And that war that was going to happen in 28 was going to restart everything in the whole universe, in the whole world, so to say. The whole world, earth. So, but it's going to start this year. Like, you know, it's foundation. And of course, it's going to start coming out this year. It was supposed to actually happen in 2028. So it's going to lead until then. Then 28, 28, that's when it happens. Are you hearing me? Yes, and I'm telling you now. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Um, I wish I could talk to you more. But I'll give more prophecies in the school. In the school, you know. Uh, in the school now, because it's always better that way. 
it's safer. Even if they record, it's still safer. Right? Because they were in the school. Um, I love you with the love of God. God bless everybody. Ah. Hmm. What is Larry saying there? My opinion on... Ah, man. Listen, let me tell you something. And this is not for, uh, for Larry Matthews, right? Let me tell you something. May, this gentleman is asking my opinion on the issue of uh, the late prophet. I can talk about him now uh, because he's no more. I don't like talking about men of God. I don't attack men of God. I don't defend men of God. Um, I defend the word. I defend the word of God. Listen. And the reason I'm saying I defend the word of God, not that I don't support men of God. I do support men of God. There's a huge difference. You see, sometimes we think we can defend an anointed person. An anointed person cannot be defended. The anointing on its own will defend the anointed. We can show support. It's two different things. Uh, the late prophet, my opinion about who he is or who he was will not change who he was before God. And as long as you have to hear what I have to say about a matter for you to conclude on or for you to have a better direction, something is wrong, especially this kind of a matter. We all have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit himself should reveal to you as a believer what is what. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what I believe. You cannot base your faith on what I believe. I've never met him. Hence, I've never spoken about this. This is my first time because Larry Matthews is asking. And I feel like I'm compelled to speak. I've never spoken about it. And I want, to, I want you to know, Larry, I didn't even watch whatever that was. Even, even five, five minutes or anything like that. Or even two minutes. I don't even know what is being said today. I don't even know what is being said. If I've never watched his sermons while he was alive, I've never watched him bless the poor. He's giving. Why will I watch something that is tarnishing his name? Why will I be compelled? Why will I have that last that this generation has, the last of seeing a man of God go down? The last that wants to hear something better about a great man of God who once blessed them. So I don't want to play that game. I didn't even, why will I do that? Why? How does it benefit me spiritually? How does it take my faith and my work with God to the next level? There are certain things that the moment you give attention to, remember your ears are a gateway to your spirit. Your eyes are your gateway to your spirit. There are certain things that once you give your ear to, you are compromised. I guard my ear gates. My eye gates. I guard that. I, I guard that. If it can't elevate me spiritually, it can elevate me into knowing God better. Why will I channel my spirit into? I'm not a gossiper. I've never been a gossiper. And I will not start today. And anything that is directed to a man or a woman of God, I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that that attack is not on any individual. That attack is on the entire body of Christ. And until the church realizes that, I think we will not be united as we ought to be. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. As a firmer believer in Christ, whether you know a person or you don't, if their ministry direct or indirect has blessed, if their ministry has ever blessed you, when you start hearing things, if one way or the other you benefited, you start praying for that person. Even if you are no longer benefiting, you just start praying for that person. Because at that moment, somebody is being blessed. Especially when you know you, they are a man of God or a woman of God. Let me tell you something so you understand. This is my answer. I know you're like, but I want to hear your answer. This is my answer. And please hear me in the Holy Ghost. Please hear me in the Holy Ghost. This is my answer, right? Uh, if Paul was to leave or he was living in our times, I want you to know that um, I want you to know that Paul was going to be called a false prophet or a fake preacher. Somebody was going to stand up 
the Paul we read about in the Bible, his books, somebody in our time was going to stand up and fight him and put him online. I'm telling you now. So there is really nothing new about a man of God being opposed. I just don't entertain things like that. And that is, my op that is me. So if you want to know my opinion, well, it won't change anything. Because a lot of people don't understand that God is not a man. If you have a relationship with God, it's your relationship with God. I can't stand here and say, uh, no, he didn't do it. Or no, he did it. I don't know. Why will I appear smart and look for views? Trying to be relevant because everybody's talking. If I'm only relevant when I mention another great man of God, it shows you that I don't have anything to offer people. And that should scare me because if people only watch my things because I talk about a certain man of God, but when I preach the gospel, nobody wants to listen. I'm followed by gossipers, news lovers. But if I'm followed by people who are hungry for God, even when I talk about God, they'll be there. More as a matter of fact. Are you hearing me? So I'm not raising a generation here or a people here who have opinions about men of God or women of God. That's not my calling. Well, that's not my calling. I don't know. Maybe somebody's called for that, which I don't know. How is that possible? But I don't know. Here, as long as you are here, you will hear the word. As long as you are here, you will be baptized in prayer. <laughs> as long as you are here, you will be raised to be a testimony of God's glory. And expect nothing, even in the future, expect nothing but the word of God. So you will never come here and find me talking about another man, another woman of God. Listen, it's their business with God. God will deal with them. And if somebody is wrong, take them to court, not on social media. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? If somebody is wrong, take your matter to court. That's why I don't subscribe to things that waste my time. If somebody did something to you, if somebody messed you up, if somebody scammed you, if somebody did want to, go to court. Go to the police station. Why are you, why are you on social media? That shows you that your motive is wrong. And Christians can't see that. So, may the soul of the man of God rest in peace. And I'm saying the man of God because I knew him as a man of God. So what you knew him as has nothing to do with me. I knew him as a great man of God. And that is me. And I'm not saying he did it. I'm not saying he didn't do it. But I'm telling you, I knew him as a man of God. So I'm not going to stand here and say, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. So, Larry, please, next time, don't ask me that question about anybody. Are we together? Amen. Anointing defends itself. Let's support men of God. Are we together? Amen. If I've offended anybody, I would like to apologize to absolutely nobody. Because that is my opinion, isn't it? And I'm saying that with humility, please. All right. This coming Friday, this Friday, today is the 24th. Tomorrow is the 25th. The 26th, right, of January, we will be on fasting. Uh, this fasting has no time to it. You can break at any time as the spirit lead and leads. So what are we praying for this Friday? Wisdom to understand seasons. The Bible says, as for the sons of Issachar, who had an understanding of seasons, times that knew what Israel ought to do. And because of that, all the other tribes, their brethren, were subject to their command. So we are going to pray for wisdom 
Yeah, you can pray for wisdom. James 1, 5. You can pray for wisdom. So we're going to pray for wisdom to understand seasons. And to understand this season that we are in. Some of you have gifts as seers. You are dreamers. You are chosen. But failure to understand seasons can cause you to wait for defining moments that will never come. And most importantly, pray for your faith. So as we pray for wisdom uh, to understand and of understanding seasons, let's pray for our faith, our walk with God. May I please you, Father. Hallelujah. And before I close, if you follow a man of God, this is hurting me because of what that guy said. If you follow a man of God, because you have never heard anything about him that is negative. You are in danger because the day you are going to follow and hear something bad, you are going to kill yourself. But don't follow because of information. Follow because of revelation. In my entire life, I've been attacked. Don't be surprised when all of a sudden in 2025 or any year or whatever that is, or any month or whatever, and you hear just somebody say, hey, this about Apostle Miss. Listen, my life has always been like that. I was attacked when I was 14 years. Can you believe that? People started calling me fake prophet, scammer at the age of 14. What makes you think at this point in time, really, that will move me? On my side, I'm focused on preaching the gospel. So you as somebody who's following Apostle, don't follow me because of information. Follow me because of revelation. Follow me because you see Christ. Follow me because spiritually your life is changing. Follow me because you are being blessed by the word of God. Follow me because God is using me to change your life. Don't follow because of information. Because if you follow because of information, information will take you away. And even a man of God or woman of God, don't follow them because of information, what somebody said about them. Because what somebody will say again about them will take you out. And you will never grow spiritual because you will never find a home. Any great man of God in this world, they will speak about him. There is no great man from God that they will not speak about him. Because the devil does not fight his own. And never forget that. Glory be to God. So you can't be great and be used by God mightily. And nobody says anything. Ah, nah, you are going the same direction with the devil. Mm -mm, it's impossible. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying sometimes an attack on a man or woman of God, it's a, it's a sign that that man of God is true or not. But I'm saying that you can't be true and be great and not be attacked. And sometimes the endurance, how the man of God stands, how the man of God behaves, even in the midst of challenges like that, tells you what he carries and who he is. So, men of God, as long as you are here, don't fight another man of God. Because that which you are thinking they are saying about a man of God that is true in your mind, you'll be surprised when they say it about you. When I was younger, when I used to hear even stories about men of God, I always thought, what in the world? Who in the world of God? Who in the world in the name of God can do such as a man of God? Until things were said about me that were never true. And from that time, I was like, what? So this is how things work. So I started remembering things that I was believing about a man. This world is wicked. People would do anything for views, man. And especially when a person is wounded and offended, they can say anything about your woman of God or your man of God. So follow God rather than idolizing people. Then you will not be confused. I love you all with the love of God. Are we on on Friday? Oh, yeah. Zoom, are we here? YouTube, are we here? Are we on on Friday? Oh, yeah. So you are breaking the fast at your own time as the spirit leads. Emily, I believe the child wants to sleep now. Like, you know what, Apostle, I've heard you now. So because of our prophet today, I will actually close the service right now. I love you. I'll be seeing you um, this Sunday if you're in South Africa. Make your way to run back. Make your way to run back. Run back, headquarters, New Life Global Church. 
we are in Runbeck. Visit our church if you are somewhere around, you're an international visitor, you're planning to come this Sunday, be there and come early so that you can be in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. And God bless our leaders and everybody that is praying for us. I'll be seeing you on Sunday. And don't forget to register on our website. Thank you so much, our new partners. I can see partners right now. I can see uh, Robinson Doval. I can see Deanna Rodriguez. I can see Shelby Charles. I can see a lot of people. <laughs> Those are our new partners. God bless everybody. I love you. Go and register right now. Dr. Means School of Ministry. Go there. As long as you're called, chosen, you're gifted, you want to grow in the things of God, go there. Learn. And God bless. Everybody. God bless everybody. I love you. Good night.